Hey, we're in the unboxing room, but once again, we're not unboxing. I'm going to talk a little bit about bags and boards. Anyone that just absolutely doesn't do any single issue comics whatsoever, this might be one you can skip, unless you just want to see me wax on and show off some of my treasures. Then, then go ahead and st stick around. <laughs> okay, so what I'm, what I'm going to talk about here is the bags and boards I use and the bags and boards I think you should use. And more importantly, the ones you should not use. What should you not use is poly bags. Don't use poly. I mean, if you're, if you're buying a comic book and you're not sure if it's gonna stay in your collection or you know you're gonna read it and sell it or give it away, then by all means, leave them in the poly, it's fine. But poly really only has two advantages. They're very cheap. And in some ways, they're a little stronger than Mylar. All of these are in Mylar. Um, poly, you can stretch poly and it won't break. I mean, eventually it'll break, but <laughs> it will take a little bit of beating. Whereas these do not stretch. Mylar doesn't stretch at all. At least the form of Mylar they use in comic bags do not stretch. And so they have a little bit of a brittleness to them. So I have had a number of splits. And what I mean by splits is where it's where the seam is. If you get a little too rough with it, or if you just get a bad batch or a, a bad uh, particular example, it can split down the side here. And that really sucks because these are not cheap. So when you get a split, you're you're gonna cuss. Yeah. So that's what's gonna happen. Now, what is wrong with poly? Uh, the main thing that's wrong with poly is it will gas off. And that is where it starts breaking down and turning yellow. And that stuff is no good for paper. It's going to ruin your comic books. It absolutely will. The question is how long before it does. You know, for short term use, a year or two, you're fine. But for long term storage, no, you, you want to get rid of that. Unless you're absolutely, you know, getting rid of the comic books. <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't intend to keep them. Uh, then yeah, get, you know, use poly, but otherwise you want to get rid of poly. Now, how long poly can last before it starts to gas off and turn yellow and destroy your, your treasure? It just depends on a lot of factors. Uh, the storage area you have it in, if there's direct sunlight, uh, the humidity level, I mean, you know, all kinds of things go into that that is way beyond the scope of my little video here. But suffice it to say, you don't want to use poly for long-term storage. You want to use mylar. So the Mylar I use is by E. Gerber. Now I think Mylar comic bags are only made by a couple of companies that I know of. Uh, e. Gerber being the main one. I think Bill Cole Enterprises that may still be around. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> but I buy mine directly from E. Gerber. Which, uh, funny story uh, about that. But um, E. Gerber sells them directly on their website. I'm going to reference my own page here and E. Gerber's page. But um, I'm going to reference my long um, neglected blog. Does anyone remember blogs? That, that was a thing. I guess it still could be a thing, but I haven't updated in my years. But anyway, I have a section on comic book storage, so I'm just going to reference that uh, periodically here. But uh, you can buy them directly from eGerber. I think it's eGerber.com. I'll show some uh, uh, footage of the website here, and <laughs> you will see that this thing looks like it hasn't been updated uh, since 1996. And that's probably because it hasn't been. I'm going to do a little digging with the Wayback Machine and see just how long this site has existed in this form. It's been a long time. As long as I can remember ever using it, and I've been using it for uh, a couple of decades probably, or, or more. Yeah, more. I would say 30 years I've been using their website. And you can look through their website and you can get all their prices and all the dimensions of the different products they offer, the different versions of it and all that. But you can't order directly from the website. It does not have that capability. You have to call. You have to make a voice call. I know it's crazy, right? You have to make a voice call to place an order with E. Gerber. And I'm pretty sure the prices listed there are the wholesale prices. I think I don't. I don't think they have different tiers for retailers or the public. And you can tell by the website's not really set up for the public, but but you can use it, and they'll sell it to you. Of course, you know. Uh, the larger the quantity, the better deal you're going to get. Now, if you don't need the larger quantities, then you can order from retailers 
but it's always going to be higher than the prices here. I mean, it has to be because I'm pretty sure they're paying the same as you would pay if you bought directly. So they have to add something to make a profit. So I don't know. I mean, that, that was my experience the last time I did a deep dive. I could not find anyone to even match the prices on the eGerber website. So specifically, the kind I use for pretty much all my single issue books, standard size, what's marked as standard. And these are my light twos. And you can get them in different thicknesses and certainly different sizes. And I use the halfback acid-free boards from eGerber as well, because you don't want to introduce acid to your comic books. So that's a whole other thing. You know, generally what comes from the shops and the different retail outlets that pre-bag their stuff is poly bags with uh, acidic uh, boards that you want to get rid of. Yeah. So, yeah, I use the halfbacks, which is uh, the size 700 HB, the Gerber sizing, along with Mylite 2s. And they are, um, let's see, 725M2. I'll show some pictures I'll insert here so you know exactly which ones I'm using here. So the reason I choose the standard size is because they fit uh, all the eras that really I'm interested in in single issue comics. See, so like here you've got very early 70s and you can see the trim size of a comic book at that point. Yeah. This looks like it's pretty much made for this size. It goes right to the edge. There's not a lot of white showing on either side. And then as as uh, the years went on, they started slowly trimming the trim size down even further and they made it smaller. So same size bag and board, now you got a little more showing. See, because we're going from uh, early 70s to mid 70s. This is like 71, this is like 76. And then over here, now we're over to, uh, I think this is 1980 or 81. And you can see they've shrank some more. They've trimmed it down some more. So you got a little more white showing. Now, I don't mind that. I don't go bananas about that. It's fine with me. Still fits nice. It's easy to get it in and out. And then here we've got, uh, I think this is 2005. And I think it got a little bit smaller, but not much. It's pretty much the same. And you might notice this video is not about autographs, but these are some autograph treasures. This is Roy Thomas' signature here. This is Mike Grell's here. This is uh, Chris Claremont's radical scribble across here and uh, the inker Joseph Rubenstein's signature here. And then this is Peter Anthony David. Of course, my daughter Kristen secured, let's see, was it all of them or m most of them? Um, I think all of them. I think she secured all of these signatures for me. So there you go. And then over here, you've got... Um, this is about 1982. It's Mike Grell's signature on this one. I'm not Mike Grell, uh, Michael Golden. Got my mics confused. But that's Golden Art on the cover and his signature. Anyway, look at the leap in price when we went from like just two years, it went from 40 cents to 60 cents. Yeah. So now I think current comic books are about the same trim size as this. So it's pr these, this, the standard size is going to fit all these as long as you don't mind a little bit of slop. And I don't. In fact, I'd prefer it. Now, another thing I wanted to get into here is I do not use tape. Tape is bad. Tape is terrible for comic books. I, I don't know why this trend got started, but you don't need tape. And I'm going to show you how. I've talked about this in some of the chats and some forums and other places across the internet, but it'd be much easier to show you. The method I use is what I call the tuck. Okay. I don't know how well you can see this, but there's no tape. So this is just simply, so when these come in, they don't come in with this, they don't come with this angled cut, they come straight. And then I have this process that I rope my wife slash producer into helping me with, and it takes hours to do hundreds of these, but we'll do them when, they, when the shipment comes in, when I order bags and boards, and we'll do what I call the, uh, what, what was the term? Uh, fold, cut, crease, and tuck. Fold, cut, crease, and tuck. So you fold, Put the bag in the board, or you put the board in the bag, you crease it like that, you fold it, you crease it, and since it's not poly, it actually takes that set. Poly bag doesn't really do that so much, it kind of bounces back, but mylar is rigid, and it will take, it will accept that crease and hold it. 
And then you take fair scissors and you lop off an angle out of this mylar. So that makes it tuckable and it just holds on there. Now, you don't need any tape. Put this back in, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so you get it in there and you just simply tuck it, no tape required. The angle helps it hold its position there and now you don't need any tape. I hate tape. Tape can destroy your books. I mean, it was one little mishap and it's going to grab hold of that cover and then you're going to be crying. And no one wants to see a comic collector cry, right? Someone might, but none, none of the people here want that. So <laughs> anyway, uh, so that is the method I use. And I do it with magazine size stuff too. Here's an old uh, Dracula Lives, old uh, Curtis Marvel magazine. Now the tape, let's see the Fold, cut, crease, and wow, I can't get that down. Um, it's cut, fold, tuck. Fold, cut, crease, and tuck doesn't work quite as well with magazine size books. I mean, it, it works, but I think because of the, uh, the shape and stuff, it doesn't want to stay in there quite as well. I mean, slop. huh? It has more slop. Yeah, there's more slop, but it is working okay. Now, what you do have sometimes with my method, it's not perfect, few things are perfect, <laughs> is where you're flipping through your bins or your boxes. And you know, I tried to get this on B-roll, but I couldn't get it to happen when I actually tried. But when I'm not trying, it happens, and it's kind of it's a little annoying. You're flipping through there, and sometimes the inertia will allow the, my, uh, the flap to pop open. You know, where you would not have that with tape, that is true. But I'm all about being able to read, browse, and enjoy my books. So I don't want them hermetically sealed with tape. I don't want them in a slab. I want them to be accessible, but, but still protected from stuff like what I almost did here. My precious <laughs> Warlord number one. I'm trying to kamikaze on it here. Okay, now this size that I've got here, the standard size, will fit, um, from a lot of Silver Age all the way up to modern and everything in between, but it will not work with something like this old guy. This is, uh, you need Golden Age bags for that. You're gonna need, maybe not Golden Age, but the, the, the size is slightly wider than modern. It might be called a Silver Age bag. I'm not sure. I'd have to double check that, but, so this will absolutely not fit this. As you can see, these are not the same. They're not even close. This old Turok fit with the 15 cent cover will not go inside of a standard bag. So I have a very small amount of these kind of boards because I don't typically have anything as old as this Turok. This is, a, this is an anomaly in my collection, but, but I love that cover, right? Very nice. I just wanted to um, talk about bags and boards and my no tape method and no poly and no tape. If you take anything from, the, from this video, Take away that. Don't use poly bags for something you care about. And by all means, don't use tape. You don't need it. <laughs> and I'll try to put links to everything that I've discussed here, the eGerber site for sure, uh, down in the description. So hope you like that. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you next time.